Uh, I grew up kind of in the finance world. My dad was a senior level executive for Chrysler Financial, um, okay. oversaw um, helping dealers out to buy their inventory um, on car lots. We call that a floor plan loan. So you see a Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership, they have all those cars on their lot. They have a loan for that. They call it a floor plan loan. So my dad was in charge of that for North America. Hmm. Um, and then if you got a loan through Chrysler Financial, they call that indirect lending. Okay. And so it was kind of around that growing up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode uh, 56 of Yellow Colored Glasses. Um, today we have a really cool guest. I've, I've actually been pretty excited about having him on for a while, but before we get started, we're going to go ahead and read a review. So Pam Allison, she says, Amanda and Dusty went above and beyond answering the many questions we had. Highly recommend their agency for all insurance needs. So appreciate that, Pam. Thanks, um, Pam. No, you're not biased at all. She's so, watching too. Yeah. Um, and I didn't say Dusty, or I said Dusty and not Dustin. It's okay. So, it's all good. Anyways. Um, yeah, so reviews are a big thing. So we appreciate that, you guys. Um, so without further ado, we have Josh Means. Hey, how are you guys? Yeah. No, awesome, thanks man. for being on, man. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Um, so. Before we get started, let's go ahead and just go ahead and th get this out there first, and then we'll do our peak in our pit. Yeah. So, um, I guess tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, um, and then we'll get into this bad boy. Yeah. So uh, I'm the CEO of Community Banking for Equity Bank. Uh, we're a 5.3 billion dollar regional community bank uh, in Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Um, and so I oversee the non-metro markets uh, for our bank, and uh, man, we just try to take care of people. Um, everyone needs a bank right and so there's two things that you're going to need in life that everyone has to have everyone has to have health care and everyone's going to have a financial need you have those two things and so um, we want to help people grow wealth and take care of their finances and so uh, that's what we're trying to do that's awesome yeah. Yeah. yeah so i guess anything you say let's let's talk yeah. about that before we we get in into yeah, we're going to talk about some good stuff on this one yeah because yeah, i have a lot good. of questions we'll just yeah. roll right into it no and, and as a ceo of community banking for equity bank i'm just uh, asking anyone please don't make any trades on anything that i right. say any forward-looking statements they don't represent equity bank they're solely my opinion so please please Please, please don't go out there and say, Josh said this and execute a trick. Appreciate you guys. So before we get into everything else, we always do a peak in a pit. So a peak, something positive going on with what, 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 what you have going on in life. And then a pit is something we're struggling with a little bit. So Dusty, do you want to go first? Yeah. So, oh man, I have multiple peaks right I bet now. I, I, bet so. I, could, I bet I could guess one. So let's go with it. Well, um, which one are you? Going? Well, the pit and more so. Okay. <laughs> So peak wise, look, we got lots of fun stuff going on. So Macklin's starting flag football next week. He's super stoked about that. We're having a blast, you know, getting ready for that stuff. Um, football season is here in general, which just makes us all super mm -hmm. happy. The yep. weather is starting to get close to cooling off just a touch, you know. So that's got everybody feeling good. And then obviously the agency, we are, this is the end of our second full year this month. Mm -hmm. And business is just it's growing and getting better and better and so uh, yeah life is good things are going well that's my peak okay um my peak is i've been i have a brand new morning routine and i said this on my last one but uh i've i've really enjoyed it it's made me feel way more efficient and organized throughout the day starting the morning off a little bit different than what i used to so loving that um makes me a little tired at night about 9 30 at night i'm like i'm pretty much done but uh if i feel like i feel a lot better so i like that so josh what about yeah. you uh, you know I, I think personally one of the things we've started doing the past couple of weeks is uh mondays and fridays my wife and i go on coffee dates that's awesome and so just a great way to start the day yep. you know we're downtown lee summit um see a lot of cool people walking around and and have conversations, but we've been doing that the past two or three weeks and just starting off the week and ending the week at that time with her has just been great. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, pit. What's your guess? I'll tell you if you're right. <laughs> your, your test. Yeah, and yeah, so my series 65, I'm still trying to knock that thing out and I'm on the second go round. And the second go round, I'm, I'm getting through it a lot, a lot better, making more sense, but I'm ready to get that thing done because that's gonna open up a lot of avenues for us. and. Um, feel really accomplished whenever we get that done. So yeah. we're getting close, um, but yeah, that's kind of a pit. But yeah, 
Is that what you're going to go with? That's probably what I was going to go with. I, it's hard for me to come up with things that are. Bad. I know it I is. <laughs> it really is. I, I don't know, but that's that's probably the only negative thing. Um, okay, a pit for me. I would say we're still struggling with 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 some of our markets with insurance. Like our 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 options are not as broad as what they used to be five six months ago. So um, whenever we are getting somebody in the doors to quote them, um, we only have usually two three options, four options maybe now versus before it was a lot more broad. So, but that'll that'll change. It'll it'll swing. It'll it'll go it'll go a different direction at some point in time. So we just got to get through the mud. And a good yeah. way to look at that so. is we've got more than one option, which is I was going to say it's better than so. it's better than I think. I think I saw a stat that the amount of independent agencies like X amount, like five, six years ago, 10 years ago was like there's only like 30% of agents that were independent and now it's the exact opposite. It's almost like it's, yep. it's pushing to go towards everybody's going independent. So anyways, uh, that's a pit that we're struggling with, but again, we'll get through it. Yeah. So, um, I, I, this, this no, may sound hard. like a, a, a cop out maybe, but, uh, I think for us, it's just time, right? It's time management. It's who gets the resources and allocation and when and how, uh, we have so many good opportunities and so many good things going on. The problem is you don't have enough people, you don't have enough resources, um, and so you have to pick or choose and you feel like, I, I may have missed out on something. Mm -hmm. um, and so you kind of second guess that I made the right decision. I know, okay. that's a good one. I feel like time is a big one. Yeah. Especially where you put that time and where you put that energy, because if you put your energy here and then you don't yeah. put it elsewhere, it's like, yeah. so that's I like exactly that right. a lot. Yeah. I think it's cool that you and your wife are doing that too. Oh man, it's the best. Yeah, I, I wish we would have started it a long time ago. Yeah, but that's a good. Because I mean, it's just being intentional with it. Like, if you don't put time aside for that, like, it's so hard to. Yeah. You're this probably this person all day long, and then you go home, and you're like, the last person you want to be is this very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. So. Yeah. No doubt. I love awesome. it, man. It's great. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's just jump into this bad boy. Yeah. So, so obviously, um, Equity Bank. Yeah. And how, how? Just tell us a little bit about kind of your journey into what you're doing now, and where it started, why you're doing what you're doing. Um, yeah. That's there. Yeah. I think for me, um, I try to see banking like a like a ministry. Um, we want to help and take care of people, and so um, we're not a large a large corporate bank where I'm calling on Fortune 500 companies and talking to people that um, are employees. We're talking to mom and pops owners or second and third generation family business owners or folks that are starting a business that yeah. are two years old and saying, hey, how can we help you uh, along that journey? And so that's part of, about, part of what I love about our bank is we're all about helping people on a journey, just like a church would that we, mm -hmm. we talked about earlier. Um, but for me personally, uh, I grew up kind of in the finance world. My dad was a senior level executive for Chrysler Financial, um, oversaw. Okay. Um, helping dealers out to buy their inventory um, on car lots. We call that a floor plan loan. So you see a Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership, they have all those cars on their lot. They have a loan for that. They call it a floor plan loan. So my dad was in charge of that for North America. Um, and then if you got a loan through Chrysler Financial, they call that indirect lending. Okay. And so it was kind of around that growing up. In, in college, got a part-time teller job and never really thought I'd be a banker and life takes off and I look back and go, wow, I, I guess that kind of worked out okay. <laughs> so uh, that was kind of my uh, journey to, to, to have this be a career. Yeah. yeah. Now, where are you, you're not from around, are you from Kansas City originally? I'm not. So I grew up in Oklahoma City, okay. uh, huge Sooner yeah. fan still. So we're, we're excited about college football season. For Hopefully sure. it'll be better than For last sure. year. Um, you know, most of the Chiefs uh, linemen, offensive linemen, are Sooners. They are. So they like they like drafting Sooners. So we take credit for keeping uh keeping At Mahomes home. healthy. Yeah. Mahomes healthy. Yeah. yeah, I remember Dusty called out. Wasn't Creed Humphrey from? Yeah, he's a center from OU. Yeah, I remember yeah. Dusty. I remember we were watching the draft together. He's like, dude, that guy fell to what? No, oh, we got him in the second round, and you were super pumped about him. Yeah, he's so. a stud. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, and just a country boy too. Yeah. From Shawnee. Yeah. So, uh, we we love created uh, us OU guys. Um, but yeah, and then we moved like nine or ten times in ten in twelve years, just all over the country okay. with uh, Chrysler. Um, so kind of grew up around it. Um, I, I thought I'd be a coach. I thought I'd coach uh, college basketball somewhere, and and uh, I still coach uh, high school basketball here at Summit Christian Academy. Um, love coaching, but uh, I love being a banker as well. That's awesome. See, I didn't know. Did you guys know that? Yeah, I'm we so, talked yeah, talk about it recently. Coffee. Yeah, we were yeah. talking about yeah. that. And um, what, what, okay, so 
with with that, like you said, you thought you were going to be a college basketball coach. Did you explore that avenue first at all? Like, I, I think we talked about that before. Did you go that route a little bit and then decide? So I've, I've coached a little bit at the college level. Um, I got married and had kids really uh, pretty young. So my oldest is 19 years old. Um, and so the path to college coaching takes so long before you're yeah. able to support a family that yeah. uh, for me, it just wasn't realistic. And so um, it's been a blast just kind of help and be a volunteer coach. I've been a head coach at a pretty large high school before on the girls' side, um, but never did it, never did it yeah. full time. Yep. Okay. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, it's I nice to be able to do that kind of, you know, do that stuff too. Yeah, with your full time gig and all that. So I stink at golf, so you gotta do something. Yeah, something, <laughs> something to get competitive. Yeah, you're, you're not talking to two very good ones here. Say, you're talking to guys that think they're a lot better than what they are. <laughs> oh man, um, that's good. So I guess uh, on on the coaching, how long have you been doing that? Like the like part time like that or yeah so I think I was 24 when I got my first so 17 years I've been coaching Dang. So and every like you haven't had any breaks mm -mm. that's every awesome every year I coach okay so um, when I moved here from Indianapolis mm -hmm. um, was living in uh, Sedalia okay um, and uh, was at a restaurant in Warrensburg and uh, ran into a guy I played college basketball with and he was the head coach at UCM and so had an opportunity to Slifer? Uh, no, on okay. the guy's side, so Doug Carlson. Okay. Um, so I had an opportunity to help Doug out for a couple years and then helped uh, coach uh, hmm. at Warrensburg High School and then Summit Christian. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. How long were you? You were out for what? Uh, 2019 to now. So I've, 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 four years. Four years is my break. Oh. And then now back into it. Um, so was were you with Nemo then? Coach Nemo I was doing the girl side uh, okay. on the high school, so boys Got side it. in college, and then girl side. Got uh, it. Coach Stamberski was there. Okay. Uh, her okay. husband was the baseball coach at UCM. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's a cool story. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I did um, not know that. Um, what do you feel like whenever you're whenever you're talking about you know your role in the banking system and all that stuff and, and your role at Equity Bank? What do you feel like the most um, the most fun part of that job is? Most far most fun part of what you're doing. I mean, I know you want to help people, and that's yeah. how, that's how you approach it, like ministry and all that. What is the what's the fun day to day piece? Of yeah. it? I, I think it's um, uh, what's the right word? Wait, way to say this? It's identifying and recruiting talent. Um, I love when uh, we see someone who maybe isn't a banker. Maybe they're selling real estate, or they're selling cars, or you know, they're in an accounting and finance job, and they and they're not. They've never thought about banking. It's not been part of. Um, their thought process and you say hey have you ever thought about this you get to bring them in you get to mentor them and then their career takes off um i love that you get or, to see that yeah kind of play out yeah or or you see a young teller who has you know uh, a lot of abilities a lot of skills um and you identify that and you help them with an internship or a management training program and you look up two three years and they're just doing great things um, so I, I love that part of, uh, of what I get to do. And then secondly, I think it's stories like your guys as young businesses that um, are just getting started. Um, you know, anybody can bank a 40-year-old multi-generational business that, you know, is stabilized and has all these assets. Um, but when you actually help someone on their journey and then you get to go on that journey with them for 5, 10, 15 years, um, we've got a few of those, and it's, it's pretty cool to look back and say, I, I gave them that loan to get yeah. started and, and look where they're at now. Well, and I think that's really memorable. I, it's actually really cool, I think, you say that because I feel like I've thought the same thing. Like, you know, if, if someone gives you a shot right at the beginning, it's like, gosh, okay, like, this is like a big deal. Like, that that person that gave you that first loan yep. is going to, you're going to remember them for a long, long time. Yeah. And I feel like as long as, which and we haven't known each other that long, but um, or really don't even know each other that well, right? But yeah. like, I feel like as long as you continue that relationship on with those people, like there's realistically no other reason why that person will go to another banker. I that's mean, right. that's kind of sure. how we think on insurance, but I'm sure that's probably the same mindset. I feel like that's the same mindset that you at least have. Yeah, it's all relationship based, yeah. right? And and you want to bank your friends. And so yeah. we really try to say, hey, you know, go bank people you enjoy hanging out with. Correct. Uh, and so I agree. You, you give somebody a chance, you give them a start, you, uh, 
and, and no industry is perfect, right? Correct. Every industry has bumps, whether it's real estate, whether it's auto, mm-hmm. whether it's insurance, financial services, we all have ups and downs. And it's making sure, especially in insurance and, uh, and banking, that you're, that you're there with them through the valleys. And Correct. when you can get people through those valleys and, yep. and you show them, help them, help them get out of that, man, there's value there. Yep. Um, it's more than just price then, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, and I think, I think banks sometimes forget about that. So there's a lot of, uh, I have a friend who's a banker and he's at a big bank and he says, you know, our, our bank will hand you an umbrella when it's sunny and take it away when it starts raining. <laughs> so yep. you got to come with more umbrellas then, right? That's when you say, hey, let me protect you here and let's make some good decisions and get you out of the valley and this isn't going to last forever. That analogy is interesting. Because I, think that's, I think that's the way, I mean, that's the way I think a lot of people view it. Like, like. That's a very good analogy, what you just mm-hmm. said. Yeah. You're talking about like how people view banks? Yeah, and and, yeah. and just not, you know, anytime something's good, or, anytime yeah. something's good, of course, of course, <laughs> of course they're going to, you know, a bank. Yeah. And, and my knowledge on, on banking is not the highest, you know. Um, so, like, but that's, I think, the common mindset of yeah. what, it, what it would be. Like, of course, they're going to give you money when everything's going good, but then if something's going wrong, like, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's you know maybe it's not the same situation. So how is with that being said, how is Equity Bank different? Like how, what makes them stand out above anywhere else you'd go to another community bank? Yeah, so I think we've made the decision um, to make decisions as close to the customer as possible. And so most banks our size are going to be structured in silo. And so you'll have a director of commercial banking at the headquarters. You'll have a director of retail banking at the headquarters, of a director of small business at the headquarters, director of private wealth management at the headquarters. And so you've got all the guys that make a decision in some ivory tower somewhere, mm-hmm. right? And so we've we've said, even though we're getting close to five and a half billion dollars, um, we wanna make decisions as close to the customer. And so we have, you know, we have a market president in almost every community. We've got VPs in almost every community. We have regional presidents, we have, um, we have really three regional CEOs, which which I'm one of those guys that report to the president of the bank. Um, two of us don't live where the bank is headquartered. So two of the three okay. of the guys that are kind of running the day-to-day of the bank are out with customers. And so I think that makes us different uh, maybe than, than other players in the marketplace. You actually get to meet with and talk with the guys that are sitting on or running loan committees um, or that are setting pricing. Um, and that just doesn't happen very, no. very often in banking. Hmm. So what does your role, I guess, specifically look like, like when it comes to an, an actual entire loan process? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's different, I think, based upon what the request For is sure. and how we met and who gets me involved. And so if I met you guys at a restaurant, we're yeah. hanging out, watching a football game, um, you know, I, I really take it from start and I'll have to have someone help me because I haven't touched the nuts and bolts of our system for a little bit, but I'll be involved from the beginning to the end. Um, so like with you guys, I, mm-hmm. I met you guys, I think, uh, through social media. Yeah, uh, through a couple of Facebook groups. Yeah, so. yeah. And so I had a, I had one of my VPs help me, but or one of my market presidents, but I was involved from when they were packaging the loan to how we structure, how we price um, through closing and make sure it went really well. Um, a lot of times, um, it's it's one of my regional presidents' deals or market presidents or VPs. They're sending me a packet and saying, "Hey, we want to lend this insurance agency or this tire and lube shop or this uh, doctor's office shop money. You know, here's how I'd like to structure it." Um, I'm calling them and saying, hey, it looks great, or hey, let's tweak this a little Mm -hmm. bit. Um, I'm kind of the final approver up to a certain dollar amount, and then I chair loan committee up to a certain dollar amount. Um, And so um, it just kind of depends upon how I get involved and when I get involved on the Mm -hmm. loan side. Yeah. Um, But I I, I really can touch it from the very beginning. As much as you really want, it sounds like. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there any any certain types of loans that you guys specialize in? I mean, I think we've talked a little bit about that, but is it more on the commercial side? Me and Dusty, we're talking about this a little bit. Like, I mean, I know a little bit of, I mean, like very <laughs> high level stuff, like yeah. commercial loans or residential loans. Like what's the difference there? Yeah. Um, and, and what does that look like with you guys? Yeah, I think we're really good at um, 
with small business and private banking. I think we're okay. really, really good sure. at that. And that's considered com- on the commercial, commercial side. side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then private banking would be like doctors, lawyers, CPAs, who still a lot of the times are small businesses, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a professional practice. Um, I think we're really good at that because a lot of times the way they do their tax returns or their financials doesn't look like a W-2 employee stuff. And so you've got to understand that these guys are trying to um, limit tax liability mm-hmm. um, and limit liability in general with how they file things. For sure. And so, um, and, and you get to a bigger bank and maybe those relationships aren't big enough to move the needle. We're still small enough to where that small business is important to us. It's just not a name on a spreadsheet. I got you. And so you get to a $20 billion bank or a $100 billion bank, a $500,000 loan doesn't mean a whole bunch to them. Yeah. It means a lot to us. Yeah. Um, those those core deposits, those checking account deposits mean a lot to us still. Um, and so I think we're really good at that. Now, with that being said, that small business person, they may have a commercial real estate need, an operating line need, an SBA need, credit card needs. That's just one half of their life. They've also got their consumer retail needs, right? Mm-hmm. And so they've got to have a mortgage. They've got to have a HELOC. They've got to have a car loan. Um, and a lot of times uh, a bigger bank or a bank that's not um, designed to help the small business or private banker guy isn't going to understand their financials. And they say, okay, they really show they made a lot of money, but look at all this depreciation. Look at this amortization. Um, or they put a lot of money into a studio and need to add that back into their cash flow. And so mm-hmm. we not only take care of them on the commercial side, but we're also able to understand their financials can. that can flow over to the personal life and make that work too. So you guys are looking at the entire, yeah. basically scenario, like the whole entire situation versus yeah. just one little number home, or maybe your credit score just in this side. number. Yeah, yeah that's Makes exactly sense. right. Sure. Yeah, you answered my que- my next question before I could even get it out because that's <laughs> what I was going to say is like what, what as your guys, as, as your bank, what are you actually looking for from a small business? What are you looking for um, for you know what types of businesses are you wanting to to be able to help is there anything specific yeah i I think again we just want to help as many people as we can be financially healthy and so um understanding um that there's a difference between commercial debt that allows you to build wealth because it's it's providing cash flow right and then toys Mm -hmm. on the consumer side right Mm -hmm. like toys are fun but they also cost money Complete liability yeah (laughs) Yeah, they break yeah they're just taking cash out of your pocket so you know um whether you like or agree with dave ramsey or not you know there's some really good things about having a you know low low consumer debt right but if you can go buy an asset on the commercial side that cash flows no matter what the debt level if it's providing cash in your pocket, it's, okay. yeah. it's probably, you know, there's always exceptions, um, but it's probably a good deal. And For so sure. um, just having those conversations, um, but we, we love our insurance agencies. Mm-hmm. We love attorney's offices, CPA offices. Uh, we love, uh, my wife's a dentist. Um, we love the healthcare space. I think we understand it really well. Yeah. Um, we love folks that invest into uh, real estate, whether it's one to four family or multifamily. Mm-hmm. Um, our, uh, our, our, our COO that just retired, but he still sits on our loan committee, um, he had over 200 hotels that he had, he had sold at one point in time. That's so cool. we feel like we have a hotel specialty. Um, we do a lot with the Freddy's franchises, so we feel like we're a really good franchisee um, <laughs> lender. So There's think, a ton. Yeah, so I feel that's like awesome. just the small business world. Yeah, uh, we feel like that's just that's just our space. We we kind of have um, connected souls with those guys. We're only 20 years old. Our bank is five and a half billion. Um, our CEO Brad Elliott, who I think is probably the smartest banker I've ever been around, um, he started this with a little 50 million dollar bank in Andover, Kansas. Mm. Um, and so he's grown it to five and a half billion in yeah. 20 years. Most of the banks our size are 120 years old. And so um, we're entrepreneurial like you guys are. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's why we fit with small business owners. Great. That makes total sense. And honestly, I had no idea that you guys were that new. I mean, yeah. I thought Equity Bank had been around. Cause like I have a lot of family out in Warrensburg. Yeah. And I think Equity Bank is, yeah. they're pretty common out. Like yep. I know my dad banks at Equity out yeah. there. Um, like for his construction loans and all the stuff he does and always such i mean i've always heard such highly you know <laughs> good yeah. things about you guys especially in our area so i just had assumed that you guys have been along around a lot longer than that yeah. so no. that's cool yeah sure we got next um well 
Yeah, so that I guess that leads into um, is there any like certain areas or markets that you guys like? Like, um, like if like if you guys don't have a, an actual branch location in that area, are you guys wanting to lend in that area? Yeah, um, or is that even a thing? Yeah, for sure. So we're in uh, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, okay. and we consider all four of those states are market so okay. for instance we're not in oklahoma city mm -hmm. uh, but but we have relationships in oklahoma okay. city we're not in st louis but we have relationships in st louis we're not in little rock okay. but we have relationships there and, and we love ag lending we love cow calf operations we like stalkers we like row crop um we feel like we have an expertise in that as well and so we have uh, relationships all over those that four state footprint in counties and cities that we don't have a physical location in. You know, technology shrunk the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of people never walk into a branch anymore. Yeah. And so we can get you set up on your accounts online. You can have my cell phone number, a regional president's cell phone number. You're just texting and saying, hey, can you do this or do that? And so having a physical location these days isn't as important as sure. it used to yeah. be. But isn't that a thing sometimes where like banks won't, like if, the, if like I've talked to people like, I mean, this is more on um, like credit unions and I think that's a totally different, yeah. a, a totally different area. But you know, if they're not in a certain county, then they're not gonna lend out or they don't feel comfortable lending out on real estate in this area because that's just that's just out, outside of their scope of, of, of territory. Yeah. So within policy, credit unions are a little bit different because they have to have a charter that says this is what our membership is. Okay. Right? And so um, as that continues to expand, I think they're expanding, but they have a charter that says here our membership is X. Um, so they're a little bit um, more, more defined. And then most banks um, will have in policy what their market is. Okay. And so depending upon size, it might be the counties and adjoining counties that they're in. Um, but usually as they grow in asset size, their market size grows. And so it might be the states they're in and the adjoining states, um, might just be wherever they have branches. Everyone has a little bit different um, view on that. Our view is if you have a relationship within our four states, we want to bank You're, those people. Gotcha. We're relationship. Relationship. Yeah. yeah. We want to hang out with our friends. We yep. want to bank our friends. And so if we've got a buddy in St. Louis, let's bank Let's them. roll. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, and that it go. I mean, it, that's I, I. That's ex like what you're saying is exactly your. I feel like your actions with everything. Like I see, I see you everywhere on a lot of these real estate pages and stuff. And it's like me and Dusty were talking about a little bit before. It's like because I didn't know recent until just a couple or today that you guys had breakfast and or um, coffee, coffee and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, you know, what you think? He's like, dude, Josh is like really cool, like down to earth. <laughs> I'm like, I know, like you know, like that's just. I don't know. I, th I think that's a really cool thing. It says a lot about you. Um, I appreciate that. So. Yeah, because when you, I mean, when you're doing a lot of, I mean, like he said, you're on social media. You know, you're yeah. pretty, um, you know, well known. I feel like at least in our circle with a lot yeah. of the real estate people that we know, the investment, you know, people that we know, and so you know, meet, meeting you, you don't really know, you know, what what to expect for real. And so, how down to earth you are in the way that you when you say that you're relationship based, like it, it takes five seconds to realize that. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes it's just being in a suit. Right? Yeah. Like sometimes people, you know, sometimes that being in a suit. Well, even just a banker title. I mean, yeah, banker, I mean that's a you know? that's a. I mean, everybody. I don't know. I just think that that, that title in general comes with the. You guys work out a lot more than I do, so I'm trying to hide the banker. <laughs> yeah, the shoulders a little bit. <laughs> that's good. That's yeah, good. I need to start working it out looks more. Good. Like you, it I appreciate looks good. it. No, but I think that is a I think that is a huge deal because whenever you're meeting, whenever you're meeting with people, and this goes for all of us, when you're meeting with people, um, they, the the you know, sometimes people are on edge, right? Sometimes people are intimidated by certain things, and they already have their guard up. And whenever you're able to have that relationship be formed from the very beginning and be, it puts people at ease and yeah. i think that makes obviously you very successful um, yeah. with, with what you're doing so well, i don't know if we're su successful or not but i hope um you know my, my grandfather was a pastor most, most of my uncles are pastors and man it all comes down to people all right so, like that's money's all I mean, yeah. yeah money's gonna be gone building stuff is gonna be gone and so I hope when I'm an old man and my kids and grandkids are running around I hope there's guys saying hey I have a business or my kids have this or whatever because we invested into them mm -hmm. and so um, I hope that has I look at I get calls sometimes 
from something my great grandfather did That's multiple cool. generations ago. And so I hope I can carry on the legacy that yeah. that he started, even though it's not behind a pulpit. So, uh, man, I really more than anything that means a ton that you said that. So I yeah. appreciate that. Hey, welcome. And I think we can. Because I mean that's 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 a lot. I mean a lot of things. That's what we pride ourselves on with our agency. Yeah. I mean, we can't control our insurance rates. Yeah. We can't control what prices look like. That's I right. mean, people sometimes literally think we do. It's like no, yeah, we don't. Um, but we can control, you know, how we treat someone, how we service them, you know, how fast we are to respond to them. Like, because that's the only thing you can do. That's the only thing you can control. Yeah. And if you can value those things, that hopefully will get through to the right sure. people that you want to do business with. And um, like I always tell people, like as long as we don't really upset somebody, there should you should there should never be a reason why you ever need another age, insurance agency That's because right. now we have options. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know. So I. So I, can I, I ask you guys a question? Yeah. For sure. So you guys asked me a little bit about, about my business. How much do you guys do both consumer and commercial? Are you just consumer, or tell me a little bit about what you guys offer? So we do a, we do we have really three things that we focus on. Um, we do all the personal lines, right? Okay. Your normal auto, home, boats, recreational, things like that. Um, we do a ton of financial, like life insurance. Dusty does like, he's getting into his, I mean, you can talk on yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the financial side of things. Um, and essentially being a one-stop shop for everything because mm -hmm. the, the personal line side, the commercial side, uh, we, we're big into commercial auto. We, that's a whole yeah, like other trucking, department. Like trucking, yeah. long haul trucking. We do, we're actually in 33 states nice. with long haul trucking. Nice. Um, and that's a that's a really big deal on what we do. So yeah. like Janny and Caleb, that's their our complete trucking department. Um, and those guys are, I mean, that's, that's just totally different stuff because these guys are paying twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year in insurance premiums yep. for their semis and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, a that's their biggest, you're talking about like how important it is. Like that's their biggest expense with their business. Yeah. So that was fun. And that's something we just got into like about six months, well, three, year ago. three or four months into open up the agency yeah, is when we true. first started. Okay, nice. yeah, yeah, that's true. So anyways, so that was it. And then, yeah, Dusty does a lot of the finding like annuities and things yeah, like that. And essentially, it's it's really just almost like three businesses in one, right? You've, yep. got, you've got your different areas that are all creating that revenue and getting all three of those to perform at a level that you want um, to where they balance each other out and, um, you know, know what you're expecting, uh, know how to grow and scale each section, you know, each department. Um, that, that's a that's a big part of what we're doing and our goal when we opened up whenever we sat down and mm -hmm. created the business plan was we want to eventually be a one-stop shop for everything uh, that, that anybody's going to need so yeah. we're slowly getting there I, honestly it's kind of happening even quicker than i think we yeah like the whole you know because like on the personal line side like when we started um i mean we that was our main thing because like when i was at state farm a lot of we knew all those people would would would, would follow our Wait, majority of them were you jake, yeah, from, state jake from state farm awesome. Awesome. i know That's yeah right. everybody knows that they still call me that i was on a basketball team when i don't even deserve to be on the same court they're like that used to be jake from state farm <laughs> So that's awesome. That that whole side just rolled, and then all the other stuff that we fell into, it just fell in with guys like mentors that we that have helped us out a ton with, and it's um, it's been a real blessing, I think. So yeah. it's been fun. Nice. So, yeah. but uh, but yeah. Cool. What else? Well, what do you? What would you say um, about the, everything that's kind of currently going on? Yeah. Like, what about the market? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think the future? What's your opinion on that? Yeah. So. This is not a forward-looking statement. Yes, Don't trade on this. Exactly. Um, so we'll talk about rates a little bit. Yeah. I think you know whether you're a consumer or a commercial guy, you, you want to know what's going to happen in, with, with rates. So um, if I if I had to guess, I think we're going to flatten out or see maybe one or two more rate increases. Um, and so, um, again, please, please, please don't trade yep. on that. This is all speculative. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> but I think if you look, you can go look at the uh, Fed dot chart which kind of tells you what the Fed governors think is going to happen. And I think second or third quarter of next year, um, we're probably going to see rates to start to pull back a little bit if everything stays even, right? If you have some geopolitical event, um, you know, politics can mm -hmm. can mess everything sure. up. Correct. <laughs> um, but what I, what I would say is I, I think as you see um, – banks making decisions right now, I don't think banks think that the pullback is gonna be nearly as fast as the rate hikes. 
Okay. Right? So we spiked so quickly. Um, we don't expect the downward trend to be nearly um, as sharp. And okay. so when you study the yield curve, right? So if there's an interest rate yield curve, right now, one year money is more expensive than three year money or five year money. So in our world, we call that having an inverted yield curve, which a lot of times predicts a recession. Um, we put so much money, fake money in the economy now. Mm -hmm. I don't know that until we have a depression that mm -hmm. we're ever gonna have a real recession. It's gonna be really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but so even when they stop raising rates, the back end of the yield curve still has to go up just to normalize. So Fed funds might stay flat, mm -hmm. right? And so one year money might be eight and a half or nine, but three to five year money could still climb because right now it's kind of at, it's in the, it, it's, it's one year money, let's just say it's mid nines, three year money might be in the high eights. Mm -hmm. To normalize, that has to go to 10, right? Just for us to have a normalized yield curve. Gotcha. So just because, uh, just because the Fed stopped raising rates doesn't necessarily mean that the long end of the yield curve isn't going to go up. Okay. That's that's on my series sixty five test. So <laughs> sure it is. I understand. No, it really is. I understand more now. So that kind of made a little bit of sense. But <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so um, anyways, but again, w when you're looking at assets, the question is: Is it a long term asset or short term asset? And so, um, if the asset if the asset is right, don't worry about the rate, right? Yep. So like uh, I say, date the rate. That's exactly right. Yep. So if you have a good relationship with your banker and it's the right asset, the rate part kind of normalizes. Yeah, that's, yep. that's true. Yep. I mean, and then it is true, like date, date the rate, marry the asset, right? Is that, is that yeah. Yep. So I mean, and it makes total sense. Like if you're, we've talked about this sometimes, um, you know, we always talk about like, if you're gonna buy something, you know, if it's the next one, two, it's like from a real estate standpoint, if it's the next one, two, three, four years, you know, there's a little bit more risk with that, right? right. But if you're keeping it long term, then it's completely irrelevant because, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, even if you do make a bad decision or it is a bad deal or a bad buy or whatever it is, it's going to level itself out, and at some point in time, you're going to come out on top on that. Yep. Yeah. No doubt. It's just a matter of time. If you buy cash flow, you're good, good. Yep. right? So um, that's why I tell people the cash flows. Don't mm -hmm. trust about the rate. Yep. Yeah, and that makes total sense. So, because then whenever it does go back down, then your cash flow just increases even more. There you go. <laughs> it's just a matter of time because then you got it for a good deal. No now, doubt. down three or four years, you refinance, and then now it's even a better deal. No doubt. So, that All makes right. sense. So, were you in the whole banking? I mean, you were in the banking world in like 2008, right? Yeah. So, that's nothing. We're in nowhere s s scenarios like what we were back then, right? I don't see that. Okay. Um, I don't. I have. Or in, your, in your opinion? Yeah. <laughs> in my opinion, I don't see that, um, and I haven't seen other economists see that. So, um, you know, 2002 to 2008, uh, banks had a lot of money on residential development loans, a lot of spec loans on one to four family. Our inventory is so low right now. Um, yeah. I just don't see a lot of. Uh, I don't. I don't see a way where our where that market is going to crash unless we have an employment issue. That's the one thing that, um, if we have an employment issue, that's obviously going to affect housing costs, right? And house house prices. But we don't. I mean, like, we there's don't. there's all kinds of jobs open. No doubt. I mean, even if they all talk, they all talk about like AI taking a bunch of jobs, but that's like down the road, and like that's that will create more jobs, in my opinion. Right? I mean, uh, at I, some point in time. The amount of jobs that I see, these people, you know, we're friends with a ton of agents yeah. on Facebook, and it's like. Now this is just the insurance world, but I know it's many industries. People can't find people to, to fill right. the positions that are there, and yeah. so yeah, I don't. I think yeah, I don't think that's an issue at all. Um, and our else? our part of the world's pretty steady, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. And so even on the commercial real estate side, where I think we're going to have some bubbles in the Northeast, that's what I was gonna Chicago, add. West Coast, and even Dallas is starting to see some deterioration, which is interesting because they've not seen that the mm -hmm. past couple of recessions. Um, in our part of the world, we just I, I don't I don't see that yeah. happening. We're we're pretty steady around Kansas City, Wichita, St. Louis, Northwest Arkansas, mm -hmm. Tulsa. Those markets are pretty pretty steady markets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there was an interesting article. I don't know where you were going with that, but there was an interesting article I saw a couple of days ago, and it was all about the commercial real estate mm -hmm. and and because of the the results after COVID of of you know remote work and people not needing to be at an office to be employed, right? They can work from home, that the commercial real estate prices, 
essentially the bubble that you just kind of mentioned was gonna was gonna hit big time because it's not worth as much, right? It's not worth yeah. the employer. You know, companies aren't buying big giant commercial offices. Yep. Spending the money on on that to have people come in there and work every day when they've got people that that are working remotely, and I, I think that does fit right with what you said. Like it's not huge in, in Kansas City in the Midwest, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, the coasts and you know big cities like that, I can see that for sure. It still is. It, it still is interesting though, because I mean, you see spaces like commercial spaces that are up for lease for yeah. a while. Two years. Yeah. That's I mean, good. it's interesting. So it just makes you wonder like what that will look like because, and, and I could be completely wrong on this, but I'm assuming like a lot of these commercial loans are on balloons. Is that what they're called? Like a, yeah. like a seven year. Yeah. So now if they bought something six, seven, five, like six, seven years ago, now they're having to refinance at a way higher rate. Yep. Right. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. We just don't have a lot in our footprint. We, we're not exposed for sure, to that. For sure. Um, and a lot of, a lot of the banks that carry that debt are the, the top five banks in yeah. the country. And so your local community banks or regional banks that are taking care of the small business owners, their exposure to that in our portfolios. hundred percent. Pretty yeah. minimal, and and the big boys can weather that storm. That's true. So, That's true. Um, I think they'll be okay. So it's going to be interesting on the valuations, though. They're going to take some hickeys. So yeah. part of how you appraise, um, not the bank appraises it, but a third party appraisal is an income approach, right? Mm-hmm. So if that office building is yeah. fully leased and generating X amount of revenue, when they go to reappraise it when they're note balloons, it's going to be worth significantly less if those. Um, leases have gone away due to COVID or whatever. So oh, gotcha. there's going to be some deterioration. So what do they do there then? Yeah, so they have to mark to market, which means you gotta you have to mark that. So if that asset was worth, let's just call it 300 million, it's now worth 80 million. You have to mark it, mark that to market on your balance sheet. So you're pretty right. much writing down that asset, and then you have to ask that borrower to pretty much either pony up additional cash or additional assets to right size that debt. Really? And so it. It becomes problematic, okay. so yeah, um, sure. which is part of what happened in two thousand eight as well. So um, that mark to market rule is pretty uh, hmm. pretty tricky, um, and it's it's there's not a lot of leeway. Yeah, that no, that's a very like I, I've you know I, again I like we I like I like watching and listening to that stuff a lot. Like and, and it is just that's what they were all talking I'm like that's the biggest deal right now on the commercial side is they're talking you know whenever they do have to go refinance these rates and their their income is down and yeah. then i'm like well then what do you do yeah. so that's why i wanted to ask you um huh, that's interesting but that's that's also there that, that creates opportunities for others for other things yep, of course no so what about uh here's a quick question for you um and i have i don't even know anything about this really but what about like crypto and stuff you think you think digital currency and all this stuff you think that's really going to affect us in my personal opinion yeah personal opinion. <laughs> uh, not equity banks i don't think the most powerful people in the world will give up control of currency okay. so if you're the leader of the eu if you're the president of the united states mm-hmm. if you're um the prime minister of china mm-hmm. are you going to give up control of currency i just don't see that mm-hmm. happening so they're going to find some way to regulate that mm-hmm. that says we're going to make sure you don't have too much control yeah. so that's that's my opinion. Yeah. Um, but I just, I just don't see those guys giving up that no. control. It's but in the meantime, maybe in the short term, you can capitalize on some of them for that. <laughs> yeah. I, maybe. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Man. Well, we're all big. Right. We're, we're well, we're not big. Curtains, no, guys. we're not. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. We went into the Doge thing back in the yeah. Uh, whenever that happened. That back was, when old Elon was pumping that thing. Me yeah. and Dusty were sitting there like, oh my gosh, this is a hundred bucks turned into. X amount, like that was thousands there for a second. Anyways, that was a fun little, yeah, fun little ride, fun little dopamine hit. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Well, man, thank you. Yeah, this thanks has for been coming really on. good. Yeah, thanks uh, for hanging out. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, uh, episode what fifty six over and out. Fifty six straight. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you.